bandwidth. Bandwidth refers to the maximum amount of data an internet connection can carry at once. It's a measure of capacity, not speed, and is usually expressed in units like Mbps or Gbps. A common point of confusion is that bandwidth is often mistaken for internet speed. In reality, bandwidth tells you how much data can be transmitted at the same time, while speed relates to how quickly each individual piece of data travels across the network. So even if you have high bandwidth, your connection might still feel slow if too many tasks are running simultaneously. When it comes to everyday use, bandwidth plays a key role in how many activities can happen at once. Streaming videos, downloading files, browsing websites, and updating apps all draw from the same available bandwidth. The more devices and activities you add, the more this capacity gets shared, which can impact performance. For light internet use on one or two devices, 20 to 100 Mbps is usually enough. However, if you have a household with multiple users streaming HD content, gaming, or downloading large files, you'll likely need 200 Mbps or more to keep everything running smoothly. If the demand exceeds the available bandwidth, slowdowns and buffering are inevitable. To resolve this, you might need to upgrade your internet plan, improve your networking hardware, or limit the number of high bandwidth activities happening at the same time. Mbps Mbps stands for megabits per second. It is the unit used to describe how much data can move across an internet connection every second, right? When you see an internet plan advertised as 100 Mbps, it means the connection is capable of transferring up to 100 million bits of data per second. You can think of this as the volume of digital information flowing through the connection each second. While Mbps is the most commonly used unit, very high-speed connections, such as fiber internet, are sometimes measured in Gbps. Mbps is still used most often because it matches the speed range most homes and businesses operate in every day. Here's another comment of confusion. Like I told you in my previous video, the difference between megabits and megabytes. Mbps, with a lowercase b, refers to how fast data moves over the network. Mbps, with an uppercase b, is what computers and browsers use to display file transfer speeds. So, the relationship between them is fixed. One byte contains eight bits. This means one megabyte per second equals eight megabits per second. As a result, a 100 Mbps internet connection will typically show a maximum download speed of about 12.5 megabytes per second when downloading a file under ideal conditions. Next, download speed. Download speed refers to how quickly data is transferred from the internet to your device. Any activity where information is coming to you relies on download speed. This includes loading web pages, streaming videos on platforms like YouTube or Netflix, scrolling through social media, and installing apps or software updates. For most users, download speed is the most noticeable factor affecting how the internet feels on a daily basis. That's why it's the primary performance number advertised by internet service providers. However, there can be differences between advertised and actual download speeds. These differences are often caused by factors like network congestion on shared infrastructure, signal degradation with certain connection types, or limitations in your home networking equipment. Under normal conditions, a stable connection should consistently deliver about 70 to 90 percent of its rated download capacity. When speeds stay within this range, videos play smoothly, downloads complete quickly, and multiple devices can operate without noticeable slowdowns. Quick note, if you're looking for the exact tools and gear I personally recommend for fast, stable internet, I have linked everything in the description below. Upload speed. Upload speed refers to how quickly data is sent from your device to the internet. Any activity where data is moving away from you depends on upload speed. This includes uploading photos or videos to cloud storage, sending files via email, posting content online, live streaming, and transmitting your video and audio during video calls. Unlike download speed, upload speed isn't as noticeable during passive activities like browsing or streaming. However, once data needs to be shared, backed up, or published, upload speed becomes much more important. 
In many consumer internet connections, upload speed is significantly lower than download speed. This imbalance can cause performance issues when multiple users upload data at the same time or when transferring large files. For everyday tasks like email and occasional video calls, upload speeds of 5 to 20 Mbps are usually sufficient. But for more demanding activities like cloud backups, content creation, and file sharing, higher upload speeds are beneficial. Live streaming and real-time communication also require a stable and consistent upload connection to maintain good quality. Next, we have throughput. Throughput refers to the actual amount of data that is successfully transferred over an internet connection during real-world use. While bandwidth describes the maximum theoretical capacity of a connection, throughput shows what you actually experience during daily activities. In ideal conditions, throughput may be close to the advertised speed. However, in practice, it's often lower due to factors like network congestion, Wi-Fi interference, device limitations, and server conditions. From a user perspective, throughput is the speed you see in real life. For example, if you have a 100 Mbps internet plan, but your downloads average around 70 Mbps, that 70 Mbps is your actual throughput. This is why two people on the same internet plan may experience different speeds depending on their network conditions. Ultimately, higher throughput results in faster downloads, smoother streaming, and more responsive browsing. Next, we have latency. Latency refers to the time it takes for data to travel from your device to a server and back. It's a measure of delay, not data size, and is typically measured in milliseconds, or MS. From a user perspective, latency determines how responsive a connection feels. Actions like clicking a link, sending a message, or moving in an online game depend on how quickly data completes this round trip. Low latency means near instant responses, while high latency introduces noticeable delays, making actions feel slow or out of sync. This is why a connection with high download speeds can still feel laggy if the latency is high. Latency is especially crucial for real-time activities such as online gaming, video calls, and cloud applications. Even small delays in these scenarios can affect call quality, game responsiveness, or voice synchronization. When latency is high, it's often caused by long physical distances to servers, network congestion, or inefficient routing. To reduce latency, solutions include using closer servers, wired connections, or internet services designed for low latency performance. The last is jitter. Jitter refers to variations in latency over time. While latency measures how long it takes for data to travel, jitter describes how consistent that travel time is from moment to moment. On a stable connection, data packets arrive at evenly spaced intervals. However, when jitter is present, packets arrive irregularly, some faster, some slower, creating an uneven flow of data. From a user perspective, high jitter leads to noticeable disruptions in real-time activities. During a video call, jitter can result in choppy audio, frozen images, or brief dropouts. In online gaming, jitter can cause sudden jumps or delayed responses, even if average latency seems fine. Jitter typically occurs due to network congestion, Wi-Fi interference, or inefficient networking. To reduce jitter, you can improve network stability by minimizing Wi-Fi interference, using wired connections, or opting for internet services designed for low latency performance. All right, you can check out the next video on internet connection types where I explain it in a way that's easy to understand. Thanks for watching.